Ladies and gentlemen, let's read Gaming Theater Com video. Micron have announced that they have indeed managed to boost the performance of DDR3 memory by a rather nice 18% for DDR3-2133 modules. Specifically, this is all about the 4 activate window, or T4, that is T-F-A-W. Now, T4 is used to specify the time window in which four activates are allowed on the same rank. Now typically these values for those of you who don't know are usually set to 35 NS. So this means that if you're going to activate 10 banks you'll have a total of three of these T4 cycles. So that'll take you 105 NS. So obviously that's a delay and timings and slower access memory means you're going to have to wait for things to well pretty much reach the processor and this causes a large bottleneck in what is known as high operations per second also known as ops ops specifically this is typically aimed at very high-end systems so for example very high-end render rigs server farms and so on so as I mentioned, they've managed about 18%. So the 35 has now been reduced to a cycle of just 30. Now, they are actually working, Micron are actually working alongside Broadcom for these, uh, for these type of improvements. And indeed, there was a statement issued by the Vice President of DRAM Marketing. And he said, and I quote, OEMs today continue to tackle the challenge of an ever-increasing volume, velocity and variety of data. We are delighted to be working with Broadcom to f validate a solution that helps alleviate the throughput challenge for our mutual customers. So, end quote, this is not exclusive. In other words, this is not just for Broadcom. They are indeed making these modules currently in 2 and 4 gigabyte formats. And right now, they're going to be focused on ops heavy network processing devices. But eventually, this technology will start to filter to regular customers. In other words, you and I who are, you know, using desktop PCs and stuff. So what does this actually mean to you and I? Well... Not that much right now, but what it will mean is that devices that are using DDR3 theoretically are going to get faster and more responsive memory, up to about 18%. In certain tasks, not all, but in certain tasks, this is going to have quite a large benefit. We've discussed heavily previous, uh, previously, I'm sorry, where there are certain issues at the moment with PCs, right? Um, memory speeds right now ddr3 is just about doing uh, its job in terms of feeding the beasts of say the intel processors like the haswells as particularly when you start getting into the i7 if you've got higher end memory particularly if you're overclocking it with reasonably good timings generally speaking you're okay uh, if you're using something like an integrated graphics um processor in your system so for example let's say you're using the integrated graphic system on say a haswell just for example then you're going to be running into bandwidth problems because you're also asking the memory not only to feed the cpu with its regular operations but also the gpu and then you're going to start running into memory bandwidth constraints but in situations where you don't really need to worry about the um GPU and all you're doing is feeding the CPU right now. We have just about enough memory bandwidth available It is getting tighter though um, Obviously, it's not going to be too long Maybe one possibly two sockets from Intel for example before we're using a DDR4 as a standard Because quite simply put higher-end processors equal we're going to start running out of memory bandwidth of course we're all aware that data is becoming not only larger but also a lot more difficult to manage. Gone are the days, for example, where you could easily process large amounts of network data. Network infrastructures, network infrastructures in particular, 
are becoming extremely susceptible to these type of latencies, particularly when we're talking about cloud-based services, where you can imagine where if you're getting dozens of servers, for example, and some of the larger companies all swapping data, that can have an extreme toll. For desktop use, it's also going to become a bigger thing, where obviously gamers, for example, are having increasing desire to have bigger, better worlds, and all of that is obviously going to take a toll on the memory. Um, obviously, most PCs, most home PCs now, if they're serious for gaming, are going to have a dedicated graphics card from, say, AMD or NVIDIA, for example. You know, you might have a GeForce in there, or you might have a, a, some version of a Radeon. And so in those situations, if you're, you know, fill rate limited, if you're GPU limited, this isn't going to make too much of a difference. But in situations which are going to become increasingly more prevalent with the next generation consoles in particular going to be taking um, a hell of a lot more CPU parallelism into account. After all, we know that, of course, these multi these next generation systems have uh, several processors available, certainly more than what PCs have been traditionally focused on for gaming, where, of course, we had these situations where you might only get one, two, three threads optimized games now of course it's going to become a lot more than that simply because of the advancements in terms of the consoles in terms of how they have managed to go in their direction of course this has only severely benefited pcs which have significantly more powerful cpus so i guess we're just going to have to see how it all goes regardless this is extremely early news right now and this is by no means going to impact you tomorrow so for example let's say you want to buy a stick of memory or a couple of sticks of memory and you're thinking well should i should i do this i mean i don't want to buy stuff and then it be old hair don't worry about it you know this is going to take a while really for it to really become mainstream i'm not saying it's going to take you know a couple of years or anything but on the other hand if you do need a pc upgrade basically don't wait you know just buy your gear and go from there so anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the video i'll see you soon take care bye for now